All right, guys, welcome back. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump into that clutch that we pulled off this. I don't remember what year this Benchy is, Massimo. It's, it's, it's a Benchy, but uh, high sung 500. Um, so we're gonna look at this clutch. Uh, if you guys don't recall from the last video, we talked about going through it and seeing all the, the junk, all the oil, all the grease that's in this thing. So somebody didn't know what they were doing. And also this plate, the uh, slider plate is messed up. So I'm gonna point you down here, try to get you guys a good angle, make sure I don't unplug things I don't need to unplug and see what we can get going on here for you guys. So hopefully that's pretty good here. You're from the backside of my bench. I'll bring some light down. I'll grab a light to put on my head and we'll get this thing apart just to kind of to see what's going on with it here. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty nasty. So we're gonna try to break it down with this guy here. I think, I, I can't tell if somebody's been in here or not. Cause those, I don't know, they almost look square, but let's see what we can do here. See if we can't knock a few of these loose real quick. Nah, those are gonna be all picked out real quick. Grab a pick, I have to go through. You can see this is also bent here. So this slider that's bent there and there. So this slider will never ever act right. So we may end up having to get a new primary clutch for this thing. I'm, I don't think I have another one of these, I might. I think the other one that we had was damaged also. Um, see if this JIS will fit in here. Oh, golly. I don't know if I'll be able to get any of these out of here or not. Cause they, every one of them look just destroyed. Let me grab a pair of small vice grips and see if we can't just break these heads loose just to get a look at what's going on because what it's looking like now is we're going to have to replace that whole entire primary clutch. If I can't get in there to service it ever, um, then what, what the hell's the point of, of keeping it? And honestly, I don't want to mess up my solvent tank trying to, uh, you know, salvage this thing. It's just not, not worth it. Well, let me grab my Dremel, and I'm gonna cut some slots into these because every one of these is stripped out. So I'm gonna grab my Dremel, and I'm gonna cut a slot in each one of these, and then we'll knock it out with a flathead. Go. All right guys, so instead of using my Dremel, I want to try my impact driver here, see if I can't get it lined up and... Yeah, I can get them out with my impact driver, it looks like so far. It's gonna be a little loud. But it definitely breaks. Definitely breaks them all loose so far. Let's see if we got any that are just too far gone. So far, so good. All right, so let's take all these bad boys out. Let's see if I can get in there with my gun now and Zip them out. All right, we got all those. Let me grab a pry bar. Oop, may need one from each side. See if we can't whittle this little guy off here. Cause this thing is all, it's, it's all destroyed. Trying to keep you guys in frame here. <laughs> Look at this. What the hell? What the hell they put in here? This is insane. This is just, and you can see that slider anyways for one. All right, well, let's take the cage out. Let's set it on the ground. I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way here. I don't wanna get this grease all over everything I own. We know that thing's shot. Let's see what they got going on here. Cause this, it won't go back down on this side. So there must be a weight messed up there. Let's see if they even have the plastic slider arms on here. Yeah. Oh, geez, Louise. 
You can see the weight was out of its, out of its spot there. So I want to try to save all these weights from getting in all this grease. This one got a little bit, a little bit on it. So let's clean these guys up real quick. See if we have any uh, flat spots on them anywhere. So let's see if we can clean these guys up. Like I said, the new, yeah, it's definitely got a flat spot on it right here where it's been probably setting and locked and sliding. Like I said, the new, the new updated way to do this, they have, they don't have that ring on the outside or they don't have, they don't have that ring on the outside. They probably don't even have, they don't have any grease inside here, but maybe just a little bit on your weights and that's it. Um, and that's, I've seen that on some of the little bit newer stuff. Again, another flat spot. So I think all of these weights are going to just be, you know, trashed also because they're flat spotted. I mean, they should, they, they're going to slide a little bit, but with all that grease in there, what it was doing, it was just sliding. It wasn't letting it roll anywhere at all. But I think a new primary is going to be the name of the game here. The inner sheave looks pretty good, but as far as the outer and the slider and stuff, which you can get them off of Amazon. Uh, I'll try to remember to leave a link below. I did have one for that Cub Cadet I did. We did buy the outside pressure plate, but like this one, again, it's got multiple spots. You can see it's probably all misshaped and everything like that. So all these weights are junk. But I'm not sure what they, they just use like, uh, if it was sticking or they're trying to quiet it down or what the story is on this thing. Again, like I said, he bought it second hand and was spitting oil and doing all that crazy stuff. But so we'll have to order up, I'm gonna order up a new primary clutch. Uh, secondary clutch looks good. The inner sheave, we'll clean that up here in a second. Double check that for any major issues. There's one of the sliders. That's really weird. I don't know where that was set. Now that shouldn't be caught in there. But there's one of the sliders that go on that movable plate. I mean, you can order these separate. But man, I just, I don't want to have to deal with all this. I really don't because all these weights are wore out. I have to clean all this up. This will destroy my solvent tank in a heartbeat. And that's uh, $150 for five gallons of solvent. And I don't feel like uh, it's not worth $150. I can buy one of these cheaper than I can replace the solvent in my tank and the time to clean it and the time to make sure and the weights and all that stuff, it's gonna be cheaper for the customer for me to get a whole new primary clutch. So I'm just gonna throw that off to the side. Let me grab a little bit of uh, brake clean real quick. We'll check out this guy. Oh, the brake clean's right in front of me. We'll check this guy out. Make sure it looks good. Make sure it's not just all destroyed. All these little screws, these are junk. Now we could take a piece of Scotch-Brite, come back in here and just hit it real quick like this. A little bit of cross hatching and stuff, just kind of clean it all up. Doesn't look bad. It's got a little bit of debris and stuff out here on the outer edges. But when it comes to the sheave itself, it looks pretty, looks pretty good. Looks 
really good actually. So let's try to clean that up a little bit more. Get you a new rag here. Well, we'll get the uh, the new sheave on order along with all the other stuff we're waiting on from the first video. And when all that comes in, we'll put, we'll install all that. We'll tr I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit more off camera here. Uh, clean this up and then we'll continue on with this video installing all the other parts that we had ordered uh, with like the O2 sensor, um, the air cleaner. <sighs> what else we have to get? Um, of course, we're gonna probably need a new belt for this guy primary clutch outer primary clutch anyways the cage looks like it just needs to be cleaned i mean we need to do all types of junk do not buy one of these lights by the way this is just an emergency light because my other one went dead these things where they all talk about on facebook and everything piles of crap garbage 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 go on linzer find you a uh let me see what it is. I love, I love this light. I've had it for, shoot, I got this thing back in 2014. Yeah, LED Lenser. Go to ledlenser.com or Google it. And this is the H7. This thing is freaking amazing. Rechargeable battery. You can zoom it in and out. High, low beam, adjust it. For runners and stuff, they want to use this. It's got a little dot on the back. But yeah, Lenser, I love this light. The other one I just used because that one went dead on me. I didn't charge it. Don't buy those. Those are junk. Facebook and all that other crap you see it on. It's full of crap. I don't care what this is. This is headlamp I ever had. Oh my God, I can see everything. Yeah, shove it. It is not. You can't even see down to the damn table half the time. But anyways, guys, we'll get stuff on order. Uh, when it comes in, we'll continue this video. Uh, and if you got any questions, you know where to find it at. Drop some comments below. Uh, if you guys haven't, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. There's a phone call from the wife, so what? We'll continue on the video after this. Go. All right, guys, so we got some parts in. Uh, show you a couple things first. Air box is all cleaned out. Um, I used my Harbor Freight solvent tank and then with my old solvent in there and then used my new solvent tank to clean both of these. They're not, as you can see, this is kind of rusty, but that's a cage that was all nasty. So I decided to keep my little Harbor Freight uh, solvent tank to do like the heavy soiled stuff. And then I'll use my new solvent tank to kind of clean up the small debris. We have another wet clutch. Uh, this will be soaking before we put this in. I decided, the reason I decided to do a wet clutch is when I felt that other um, boss sticking out right here, I could feel a couple rough spots on that. So we'll replace the wet clutch. We got some oil filters in. Let's see, what else did I get here today? Uh, we did get the one-way bearing. No, I, this ended up being, I just ended up getting a regular one-way bearing for it. Uh, just. I just wanted the shipping to be a little bit quicker. So we got a regular one-way bearing. And then I got a new O2 sensor for it. I just, you know, like I said, I got some, a lot of these off of Amazon. Uh, same part number. Uh, it's Chinese stuff, still made in China. It doesn't matter. I don't, you guys can fight with me on that. It's the same Chinese crap you'll get from Hisung or Linhai, Massimo, Coleman, Vector, wherever, wherever you're gonna go to get this stuff. You find the part number, go to Amazon, you'll get the same thing, still made in China, so what's the difference? I don't know. If you guys wanna compare like, I know you can compare your like your Chinese style um, one-way bearings to your Japanese. I know they're probably gonna be better quality. Again, I will get a, like a Rhino 661 or something and just compare the two to see if they actually work on these new, on the, the style. Guys say they do, I haven't tried it. Um, New air filter, you guys seen that other one because the air box was full. And then we got a new outer primary clutch and belt. So the new outer primary, I had ordered this in the past. Um, you can see we got all the little uh, spots for all the uh, uh, splines to go in. The other one didn't have that. I like how they put this piece of hose in there to keep the uh, slider plate from sliding and all the weights falling out. We got a new, uh, I just lubed up the other one. I wasn't sure if it came with this or not, but it's all pre-greased. I will add a little, let me see if there's a grease inside here. I will add, add a little grease in here. Um, they do have grease in there, just a little bit, not a whole bunch. I did add some to this, but I'll keep this around 
for future projects. Uh, so I got everything here you're looking at off of Amazon again. You guys ask, I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but again, I'm not, a, this belt here, uh, not really a fan of the way it looks. I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but I've seen better quality, uh, but it definitely needed a belt anyways. But, um, I mean, once again, you get this stuff from Haisung, Linhai, Massimo, Coleman, Vector, Axis, all these guys who make, you know, Linhai, Haisung are the ones that make all this, most of this stuff for you guys. It's all made in China. Take the part number, go to Amazon. If you want to do a quality control between an Amazon one and one that came on the unit that you order from them, I know you can get a whole entire wet clutch drum set for like 150, 200 bucks or whatever it may be. When the wet clutch itself from Hisone, which I have ordered these directly, they're 200 something dollars. I've had good luck. As long as you pre-soak these things, uh, like I said, a lot of guys will take these apart and they'll add slugs to the to the the weight to the uh, to the fiber here on the arms to actually engage that wet or that that clutch drum more securely so it doesn't slip. Like it does, you know, it'll slowly catch it. This thing will throw it out there and make it actually stick well as long as you're in a good RPM range. Um, so the they probably covered up the part number for the air filter. You can just put it on there. Uh, oil filter, same thing. Uh, O2 sensor, part number on that one from Amazon. Uh, of course, this Cub Cadet Challenger, which is the same motor, same thing, uh, rebranded once again. All these things are rebranded, so don't get your panties in a bunch, guys. Okay, um, X002SKJHR3. Just put the part number in from the website and make sure you just double check. Uh, One-way bearing, all that stuff. I do. I really, really do want to do some do some research. I'll do some research and testing later on when it comes to the one-way bearing stuff. I just don't have time, guys. I've been sick the last week while we've been trying to work on this thing. Haven't been in the shop waiting on parts to come in and I got a million other things going on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get that clutch soaking and then uh, we'll get back to that when I get some time on that clutch. We'll jump back into this uh, cadet, but I want to show you guys these parts. So let's continue on uh, tomorrow which will be, of course, edited to where we can put this thing after it soaks for 24 hours. All right, guys, so we're back. Let's go on and get this wet clutch cover off or wet clutch drum cover back off of here. Uh, we'll get the wet clutch out, install the new one. Just remember this one here. This one here are your longer ones. Oh, don't drop down in the oil pan. I'm glad I, last time I did it, I forgot to put an oil pan down there. You guys can see, here's the air filter, if you guys remember that. So we get rid of that guy. Might as well throw it in the pile with that clutch over there. So we looked at the wet clutch drum last time and it was in great, great, great shape. I mean, it barely has any wear in it at all. But the, where the one-way bearing sets here is just gnarled up really, really bad. Uh, hopefully that's the same size. I don't have to get off my butt and go get a, another socket. But I will, it's probably, I guess it's gonna be a 20, this is a 24. So let's see what size we need. I don't think it's a 27, but we're gonna grab quite a few. Four, five, six, and seven. Chinese stuff likes to be kinda in the, in the middle of some things here. So 27 fits pretty good. Let's check a 26. That's 25, 26. Nope, 27. <sighs> and remember this is, it does have a small spot on here that's peened over right there. I 
I mean, the wet clutch looks pretty decent in here. A little, little war, not too bad. But like I said before, these edges are all gnarled up. So I don't want to reuse that. And let's pull out my new one. It's been soaking here. Ugh. It's been soaking in. Um, I'm using, this is just some Valvoline from uh, O'Reilly's or AutoZone. It's for ATUTV wet clutch formulated. So we let this thing soak and we'll go ahead and put it on. I think, I think it was 150 newton meters for the torque. All right, so it's 105 foot pounds or 144 newton meters on this nut. Uh, we're just gonna hit it again with our impact and then we'll peen it over. That way we don't have any issues with it backing off. Let's get this out of the way. This gun here goes up to 300 foot pounds, so. a little past where we initially were originally but that's not a big deal so now we'll just peen that over let me grab a punch and a hammer <clears throat> if I can get in there halfway with this plate above me there we go that's peened over let's clean up a little bit of oil grab well I need to clean the oil out of here so it quits running back down I know you guys see me do this a million times a lot of my videos are the same but we all know it's pretty much been the same it's junk every time sorry for the sniffling gasket still looks good I do have a few in stock if I do need it I do need another rag here all right let's install that clutch cover wet clutch drum oh well would help if we put the one-way bearing in right guys getting ahead of myself Again, the one-way bearing, the writing, right here, if you can see the writing, faces towards you. So when you put it on here, make sure that writing, you can read it, okay? There we go. Now we'll go ahead and put our long bolts back in up here this corner down here on that side and these all get they all get torqued around uh 10 newton 10 to 12 newton meters i know i tell you guys the torque specs every time but not everybody watches every one of these videos In one, have to see where it rolled off to. <sighs> Let's see, and I'm missing one here. Where to go? Where'd you go? I know I had them all. Here it is. 
Is that it? Yep, I dropped it. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just see how this feels initially, just to, oh yeah. No more catches immediately, no more grinding. That's smooth, there we go. That's how she's supposed to be, nice and smooth. So I'll reinstall this back CVT cover, I'll get the air box put back in, all that put back together. I'll install the clutches on camera for you guys another, again, I'll clean up down here and then uh, we'll fire this thing up and see if that cures that knocking noise. All right, so we got the uh, CVT cover back on. Let's try to squeeze this guy back in here. I know this one was a tight, tight fit. It barely, 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 barely wanted to get in there. This is how they usually are though. There we go. Secondary clutch, slide that on there. The torque on the secondary clutch is 100 Newton meters. Well, just again, I'm just gonna hit that with my impact and hold it in place. 24 millimeter socket. Now I know we're gonna have to spread this clutch open to uh, get our belt on. Like I said, been out of the shop for so long. It does have anti-seize on it, so we'll just spread it all the way open here. There we go. <laughs> Primary clutch. Got to dig out that, that hose that slid down in there, which is not a big deal. So we got the, the rear sheave will go on. It's all cleaned up the best I could get it. Ooh, what's going on here? I don't like the way that's fitting. Hey, that rear sheath's just a, just a little worn out there. I don't think I have another one of these here in stock. But that's all right, we'll put it together for now. I'll order another one. Yeah, I'll have to order another one. But this way, I still wanna make sure that it's not knocking, so we'll put that on there. Grab our new sleeve. I'm gonna add a little grease to the inside of that. Just a, just a pinch. So we need a new rear sheave so I won't put this all the way back together. I didn't notice it was messed up, I'd have ordered it. So got this guy on there. We need to clean it off so there's no grease. My hands are greasy as all get out. All right, so let's clean off this sleeve here make sure there's no grease on this we don't want any grease on that because any grease on this will cause belt slippage a little brake clean now we'll grab the new outer primary slide it on here and remember torque is uh 120 newton meters I'm not gonna put the cage back on. Well, I probably should put the cage back on, actually. That way we can just make sure we're not uh, hanging up on anything. So we're gonna torque that back down again. I'll just hit that with my gun. Grab the new belt. Go over the primary and then wind it over to secondary. 
pain in my butt right now to get everything to go. There we go. We're in the secondary. It's going to take the bolt back out. The secondary clutch. There we go here. We'll go ahead and spin it to make this bolt tight. All right, so we got that on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and put, the, I'm gonna go ahead and install the cage. Um, remember, I think it's long bolt, long bolt, short bolt, short bolt, from what I can recall. And then of course, you know, here you go, this will tell you, long bolt has the spacers. I don't know if you guys see the spacer here and back here, because it sits on here like that with the outer PV, outer CT, CVT cover. Uh, bolts back on so we'll get this in here get it lined up right there there we go so like I said long bolt and then grab this guy with my extension Double check that, make sure it's seated. Short bolt, maybe a little difficult with, I may have to use my ratchet on this one. Usually I got my quarter inch drive down here with me. Next long one will go down here. Oh man, again, the sniffle's being bent over. I apologize. All right, okay. And the other shorty way back here in his back right corner, which could be a pain in the butt. But we'll see how it goes this time. Because I'm going to take this all back apart anyways to make sure I get that new up, that rear sheave in there. It really sucks. I would have bought a whole entire clutch. Uh, oh, I dropped it. I'd have bought a whole entire clutch if I knew that would, if that was bad. I didn't check it well enough. I just saw the, the inner part of the splines. I didn't look at the back side of the splines, and that's my fault. Come on. Apparently, I got to. I missed this bolt hole. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off until I get this thing done. My arm will just be in the way. I'll get this reinstalled, air box installed, and we'll fire it up. All right, guys, so we got the clutches installed, what I call the cage installed, the belt, the air box, the air filter, the shifter, the uh, emergency brake. Uh, oh, new O2 sensor is in. It might be kind of hard to see, but it's in back. There it is, right there. Um, I did find that the intake is ripped, so that will definitely cause some issues with the, uh, the map sensor, um, the IEC motor, all that, with that extra air being pulled in, it could cause some issues. Again, sorry about the sniffling. So let's uh, turn the key, listen for the fuel pump, which I didn't hear it. 
There it goes. Fuel pump's there. Foot on the brake. Let's, uh, wait, I forgot to put the dipstick in. <laughs> I've just put two quarts of oil. Let me go throw that dipstick in real quick. I mean, call me the dipstick. I should be the dipstick. There is two quarts of oil, uh, Valvoline 10W40, UTV ATV oil, formulated for wet clutches. All right, try this again. I'm gonna have to address all that here later. As long as this thing starts up and sounds good. So let me go throw you back on the tripod here. All right, put my foot on the brake, key on, fuel pump's going, foot on the brake, we are in neutral. Look at that, clutch is setting still. We'll let the oil run through this thing. So you can see the clutches are setting still. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna give it a, just a pinch of gas to kind of get it moving a little bit. back to setting still so that's awesome with that I don't think we're not gonna think we might have an exhaust leak let's walk around the other side here Whew, shop is getting stinky though I will have to check the uh, valve clearances Sounds a little, sounds a little, a little ticky tacky up top, but it's definitely not knocking. We thought it was knocking, but it's not knocking. So we know it starts up, the clutch is set still. That's a good thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and address the fuel pump in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Go. All right guys, we're over here on the fuel pump side. Like I said, um, you guys are at the front facing the back. So let's see what they got going on as far as like the fuel lines. I. I think they just have them like pushed down in there like they broke off the i'm not exactly sure what the hell they got going on here oh well i don't know well let's just do this we'll unhook the fuel pump which is that's all messed up in there anyways you can see where they got this wire ran which is ran to a ground they got that grounded so when they turn it on it automatically kicks on which tells me there might be something wrong with the relay and then next, I'm gonna have to unhook, we're gonna unscrew this guy. Let's see if I can do it with this uh, pry bar. We're gonna unscrew this guy. So we can't get this off this Y they got built in here. Cause it should have a, you have a return. You have a feed and a return line, which it looks like they have both of those ends ripped off so that would be the feed line the pressurized line so let's go ahead and i'm going to knock this thing off here let me grab a hammer because you could never get those off by hand i have a tool for the polaris ones that fits on there and you turn it but i don't I, it I, does not fit this guy so i use this i use a pry bar and a hammer and just spin it like this. Once you get so far, you can't unscrew them. Let's take a look, see what they have going on down here. Well, the gas tank is full, but boy, that looks like, that looks horrible horrible the fuel that's in there is nasty looking that is for sure so basically what they did is they took the line and actually ran it all the way down to the return and the uh the fuel pump in itself 
So let me set this down uh, somewhere. I don't want to get this. Let me run this outside and set it down real quick. I don't want this fuel spilling all over my floor. And I'll grab, basically, I mean, the setup they have actually seems like it would work. It just doesn't hold very good fuel pressure. But here's what, here's what your stock one would look like. I mean, what they did basically, they just took this line here, this line, they removed all this stuff and just down to the bare bottom. And they just, the, uh, these two guys here, which this is like a, this is your vent. But these two guys here, they basically, all they did was uh, drill holes and put the lines through there. But like you can see the fuel pump wasn't set and right. It should have a return and it splits off to that. Uh, so not sure how, if I'm gonna order new fuel hoses for this yet, but let's, the fuel down there doesn't look the greatest either. The gas tank is definitely messed up. It's like, it's like it's got melted at one point in time. Check this out. Looks like the gas tank has got melted at one point in time, like it got really hot. So that's where I see the fuel pump. So let me see what I can come up with the fuel pump, but I know I'm gonna have to, I'm going to unhook this here from the ground and we're gonna, I'm gonna pull this out I'm gonna re-clamp uh, that back in place, fix that connector. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix that connector, double check, make sure we got the wires running to the right spot on here. And uh, we'll also deal with the ECU here in a little bit. So let me see what I can do with the fuel pump if, and see, uh, see if I can't fix that problem. Go. All right guys, so I just took the old fuel pump, put it back in. Why change something that's actually working? My other one, I'd have to cut this, either get new hoses. So basically what I did, I took this out, uh, recrimped the connectors, and just took a little needle nose plier and turned the connectors just a hair so I make sure they make good contact uh, there. So now when I turn the key on, fuel pump works, cycles on, shuts off like it should. So that's good. So now I'm gonna fire it back up take a listen to everything else and see if I can't hear anything. That's kind of crazy. So let me grab you off the stand here. We do have that reverse light on. Uh, that could be from the reverse down here, which is underneath the air box, which we're not too worried about. But this thing fires right up. And it sounds it sounds pretty good. I mean, it, it's granted, yeah, it does that. It probably needs an ECU reset. Um, the gas was a little funky looking. Idle seems just a touch low. So I might want to take, I probably want to take a look inside where the throttle body's at. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and pull the throttle body off this thing, take a look to make sure it's not filled with dirt because remember this was filled with mud. This might be or with oil and dirt. So this might have a lot of oil debris causing issues on the IC motor from operating. All right guys, let's get this throttle body out of here. If I can find where everything's at. Now, like I said, I know this intake has a crack in it, but it, it should not cause it to run that horribly. Now I know they're, these things are pretty, oh, see, look at that. There's another big rip right there, sucking air. So let's just rip it out. I mean, it's, we gotta order one to replace it anyways. We'll keep these little cups. I can't remember if it comes with these or not. Don't wanna lose it, come here. Ugh. Reach down in there, all right, all right. Get that guy. It is pretty dirty in there, so we'll go ahead and take it off. We'll check the intake boot here. Make sure it's okay. That, that seems pretty good. Just connect the IEC motor, the TPS. Come back. 
and then we'll go ahead I might need a Phillips head for that I'll need a Phillips head and we'll disconnect the throttle cable we'll walk over to uh, the bench and pull everything else off let's get this throttle cable out of here Throttle cable, do not lose this little guy. We'll set him back on the floor. It's gonna be an eight. Hopefully with all the rust, we can break this loose. There we go. Seems like come loose pretty good. Pull this out. You guys can look down in there and just see how nasty that is. Both sides, so I'm gonna pull it. We'll go over to the bench, pull the IC motor out and we'll clean this up. All right, over here at the bench, uh, I will pull the TPS also because, oh, I forgot my screwdriver over here. I can set that back. Once I hook it back up, but let's just go ahead and we'll just pull off the IEC motor for right now and take a look, see how nasty it may be and see if the track, and the spring and everything on this is just gross and disgusting because I almost guarantee it's gonna be just from looking into the throttle body. Oh, my poor nose. That doesn't look too bad, honestly. Doesn't look too bad at all. But you can see all the dirt stuff in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this over my parts washer. We're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take my parts cleaner and clean all this up, let it run through here, this passage and this passage on this side here that go through the idle air controller and clean up the throttle body there. You can just see that spring is pretty strong too. Wow, ow. Just how dirty it is. So I'm gonna clean this up and I'll show it to you guys when we're finished. All right guys, so we got this thing all cleaned up. You can see how nice and neat that is in there. There's a lot of debris, a lot of dirt inside the where the IEC actually works. I sprayed it off, cleaned up the best I could. So I got a little grease on the O-ring. We'll slide that back over. Uh, as soon as I start talking, my nose starts running. We'll go ahead and reinstall this bad boy. If I can get it to slide. We'll reinstall this with our screws. And then what we'll do, we'll go back and We'll let the unit run, restart it a few times. Uh, I'll let it get warm and then I'll do an ECU reset. Uh, the ECU reset on those is basically, well actually I'm gonna check the ECU pins first to see if they're all dirty and corroded and stuff. Uh, you can see all that dirt that was held into place in, in the connectors from the direction it sets. So this is all clean. Let's walk back over to the unit. I'm gonna reinstall this off camera and we'll pull the pins off the ECU and see what they look like. Uh, you saw the intake for this thing was all tore up, but we'll start it without it to see if it makes a difference. All right, guys, so I got the throttle body installed. Check TPS. I checked the stepper motor. Um, I have something here you guys have probably never, ever seen. Basically, this is a, this is a uh, use this chart with the Delphi code reader when diagnosing the engine starting, running, and performance problems with Challenger 550, 750, MX. This is from Cub Cadet. I got this quite a few years ago. It gives you the parameters at idle, parked, Park 4000, Park 5000, you know, as you're sitting here, you can rev these things up and you read the parameters on that little code reader I have and let you know if things are in spot. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna go through, where's idle, integrated, uh, I'm trying to find pump duty, we know that's 99. Um, where is my idle RPM, desired idle RPM, idle error. I have to look it up on this thing again, look a little closer, but it gives me the parameters where it should be setting at. Target AFR at idle should be 14.6. Um, fuel pulse width, fuel pulse width is two to four milliseconds. Desired step motor is 20 to 140 at 1400. So that's a pretty vast, that's what it says, 20 to 1400. 
Uh, I'll fire, try to fire it up again. You definitely tell. Got some weird things going on. Fuel pulse, it's almost four. So, um, again, I think I'm gonna try to do an ECU reset, which is hold the throttle down, come flat to the floor for five seconds, let it bounce off the rev limiter, shut the key off, leave your foot on the throttle for about 15 seconds. After the fact, take your foot off and then go ahead and turn the key on, wait five seconds and fire it back up. So let's hope and pray this thing doesn't decide to blow apart. So, and we'll see, and we also see if we're pushing any oil uh, into the air box here. Um, we can look at that while we rev this thing up. We get all this nuts and bolts out of the way. So let's try to fire it back up. So we got that there. All right, here we go to the floor. <laughs> Sounded kind of crappy, huh? Like really crappy fuel or something. Take a foot off. We're gonna wait a couple more seconds. I'll turn the key back on. Let it set for five. Fire it back up. But I wanna take a look down here too at these connectors real quick. Well, actually, no, let's go ahead and turn the key back on first. Fuel pump cycles. No codes, data stream. Let's take a look at our steps. Throttle position looks good. Let's push on that, see, make sure we're getting it's not quite reading 100, it's reading 77. Back to zero. Battery voltage 1195. It's a little low. Target AFR. See, it says target AFR 5.65. Thirteen nine. It's not quite fourteen. It acts like it's idling a little bit better. It'll probably die on me after saying that. See, fuel pulse is good. Fuel pulse width has actually got really short. That was that's at five point four. Sounds like it's gonna pick itself back up. Idle stepper motor. I'm looking for steps here. O2 voltage looks all right. Throttle position at 0.2. Where is my desired step showing 65? It seems about right. So I'll, I'll sit here and let this thing idle, and, uh, and then we'll check out the plugs on here. Let's see if this thing stays running. All right, guys, so it has excessive smoke coming out of the crankcase vent tube, um, and it's awful quiet in the exhaust, so I think we might have, could possibly have a clogged exhaust. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect the exhaust at the header and try to wiggle it off and see if I start this thing up, if it changes the way this thing runs. Like I said, this thing's been in the water and the dirt and mud, so it's a good possibility that they got a bunch of dirt and debris into the exhaust. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off of the, uh, off of the uh, exhaust port up front, or I should say on the of course front of the motor, but towards the back, we'll pull that off and I'll fire it up and see if it makes a difference. All right guys, so let's get you in here. I got the exhaust unhooked. Let's fire it up and see if that makes a difference. I know it's gonna be loud, so let's see just what happens here. I know the O2 sensor is gonna be off a little bit, but it's still plugged in. Let's see if that helps create less back pressure. Huh. Let me listen for the uh, fuel pump again. Interesting. Got nothing that time. 
Fuel pump. I hear it. Try to give it a little gas. Did I knock the spark plug cap off? I did. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I knocked the spark plug cap off, so that might help, huh? All right, let's get that back on there. That doesn't, that thing is all messed up. We're definitely gonna have to get a new spark plug cap for this bad boy. All right, anyways, got the blinker on. All right, try again. That doesn't seem to make a difference on back pressure, so you can see all the smoke blowing out. So, <laughs> what it's looking like is we're gonna end up, I know we've got a runnability issue, um, Oh, black lines, catch up camera. All right, so I know we have this runnability issue. We have the clutches fixed in this thing. Um, okay, try to get some light here. We got the clutches fixed in this. Um, we got the one-way clutch fixed. It is not knocking. Uh, we thought it was knocking, but it ended up being that one-way clutch bearing uh, beating around. So we know we got that cured. We got the outer primary new. We're gonna get a new inner primary since that was a little messed up. Got a new belt, new air filter. I'm gonna have to get a new intake boot for this thing. The IEC motor's reading correctly. The TPS is reading correctly. Uh, fuel pressure in this thing. The fuel pump's still a little iffy. I'm not gonna, I was gonna replace it, but it's not really broken. I got the, I got the uh, connection fixed, which makes the fuel pump cycle how it's supposed to. Um, so I think we're gonna do, we're gonna order up a top end for this thing because it's smoking. You can see it's smoking. And we'll go ahead and put in fresh jug piston rings in this thing, head gasket, uh, base gasket. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do the uh, valve clearances. We'll check the cam while we're there to make sure the cam lobes aren't wore off. That way you guys can see what's going on there, guys. Uh, so there'll be part three on this, forget what year, Benchy. 500, but it's still got the high sum motor, high sum 500, just like your Massimo's and your Coleman's and stuff. Um, so guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I know we didn't get a lot accomplished in this video uh, to cure that problem, but in the next video is gonna be the top end rebuild on this thing. I know I got a lot of people asking about that. Um, we thought initially at first we were gonna do a top end, and then I figured, you know what, let's check the clutches out. But you could, I could definitely see how much it's smoking, and we had all that uh, uh, blow by on the leak down test. I just want to see if this is actually knocking on the lower end or top end. Uh, and of course, you know, it's, it's smoking. So we're gonna go ahead and end this video here, like I just said, and if you guys haven't sub subscribed, oh, getting over being sick for a week. Uh, please subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave a comment if you got questions. Uh, you can find me at Limitless Power Sports Service Repair on Facebook, uh, Limitless Power Sports Sir and Rep on TikTok. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, you can email me at limitlesspowersports78 at gmail.com. Again, guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I, I cannot talk. I cannot talk. I appreciate you tuning in, and I'll catch you on my next upload.